Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, I have to say, I've been loving watching your interviews and like everything. Oh. It's just because I mean, it's literally so boring. Like, there's nothing. I've just been studying, and then I'm like, oh, good, yeah. something to watch. Right. So, when and why did you start Highland dancing? So I started competing when I was four years old. My mum's actually a qualified dance teacher. Um, so I guess it was her that got me into it. Um, I remember my first competition when I was four and I did the Paddy Va and the Paddy Van High Cuts. And I got two firsts, but all I can remember is that there was four medals and I only got two out of the four and I was absolutely not impressed. I wanted all four. So I guess from there, you know, you learn more dances and get more medals and that was just the start of it really. Yeah. I presume that was your first competitive memory. Like, do you remember any, like your first championship after that? So my first competitive memory from when I was really young, I think I was about five and I distinctly remember doing the swords and it was a little competition and everyone else in my set kicked the swords, I think in the second set and in the other set, everyone also kicked the sword. So I was the only person in the whole competition still going. And I remember doing the last step and I was actually looking up rather than looking at the swords. I was like, oh my goodness, I'm the only person. I need to finish this. Um, and when I finished it, everyone stood up and gave me a round of applause. Because I think I was about five and the swords were probably bigger than me. Um, so that was my first competitive sort of memory of dancing. My first championship, um, I remember very clearly. Um, so it was the first one I did was the northeast of Scotland when I was eight, and then a full year later, after getting runner up a whole bunch of times and quite a couple of few ties and just working your way up the line, um, the next year I won my first championship and it was at the same one. Oh. Um, and I was so excited. And I remember the older girls all telling me, oh, when you win your first championship, you get a chocolate cake and you get a present. It's the best thing ever. So it got to the end of the competition and my mom was packing up all the stuff and everyone was leaving. And I was sort of just lingering around the hall. And um, she was like, what are you doing? Like, we need to go home. And I was like, no, mom, the judge is going to bring me my chocolate cake. We need to wait. <laughs> yeah, that was how I thought it worked, but apparently not. <laughs> So you've been a, a massive inspiration to so many dancers, um, global. And I was just wondering, who was that person for you growing up? Um, so my first absolute dance hero was Colleen Rentamaki. Um, I remember when I was in P1, so I guess five years old, um, we had to do a project on your hero. And I did mine on Colleen Rentamaki. So I think I could spell her name before I could spell my own name. Um, and then when I was seven, my mom took me to Cowell so that I could watch her. I think that was her last year she danced, actually. Um, and I was just amazed at her strength and precision. And when she, every move that she did, it, it had a purpose. And I just, mm -hmm. oh, just absolutely fangirling all day. But I remember the morning of that Cowell. So my mom took me off school and we were waiting to get the ferry and she'd forgotten to phone the school to say that I was you know like ill or whatever um and she was on the phone to the school and the ferry like pulled up and the horn blew and it was just like yeah she's ill <laughs> like um so always a massive fan of Colleen and then after that I would say David um I just was obsessed with David I used to watch him at every championship in Scotland um especially his high cuts because yeah. it was like, just seemed to float in the air and barely touch the floor. Yeah. Um, and I remember my mom saying, well, you should just do that too. Um, so um, after watching David all the time, I used to, I started doing MetaFit in the mornings before school yeah. and biometrics. This is when I was 12, like a bit crazy to try and sort of build leg muscles so that I could dance and high cut like David. Um, and I remember I danced a reel with him at, in a class one time and I was just absolutely starstruck and it got to the pivots and then um, I just forgot how to pivot like I couldn't I just sort of was going around like I kind of jog it was so embarrassing but um, yeah definitely um yeah 
but I would say now I'm inspired by so many dancers um younger dancers and dancers that are older than me dancers in my group um I think everyone has something that they do that you can learn from so I yeah. always try have you developed any like superstitions or rituals over the years like competing so I guess everyone has their own wee funny things that they do. I didn't think I had any, but um, it turns out I do. Um, so I have a blue sparkly eyeshadow that when I thought about this, I've actually used at every championship since I was 10. So, I mean, it's probably a biohazard now. Um, I have a lucky pair of socks that I keep in my dance bag. Um, the night before the world finals, I always have an ice bath. Um, and then I don't know if this is a superstition or more of a functional thing, but I absolutely 100% need to get my Achilles and my toes and my hips to crack um, before I start each dance. Otherwise, it's just not happening. <laughs> so kind of going on to Cowell, so you were three times world champion. Is there one title in particular that stands out for you and why? Um, so I would say my favourite cowl was actually when I was 12. Um, I was so excited to qualify and dance on that stage for the first time um, with girls that I'd looked up to for so many years. Um, and there was absolutely no pressure. Um, I remember when I got the call back, I absolutely couldn't believe it um, because it's every dancer's dream to get a medal in the world final. Um, and then when I got two first places and came runner up overall, I was just in absolute shock. I cried on the stage. I was just so overcome with emotions. <laughs> um, I won the world when I was 13 and 14. And this it's something that every dancer aspires to do. Um, my mom reminded me when we were talking about this earlier that um, I'd actually announced when I was four that winning the worlds was my plan. Um, never in a million years did I think it would happen um, but it was yeah they were special days and um, I think for me the the biggest achievement was when I was 17 um, it was after I'd had a really nasty injury and it was such a struggle I didn't think I'd be able to dance to that standard again so going from not being able to hop to winning a world title when I was 17 um, that was a big achievement and I think it hopefully it showed other dancers that if you work hard enough you know you really can do anything. Yeah so on the lead up to the world championships what is a typical day's practice for you? So leading up to worlds and other major championships I train every day and um, when I was in school I used to do metafit in the morning and then dance training for about two hours um, in the evenings often with my mum and she's a qualified dance teacher and um, then we used to travel to Glasgow two to three times each week for lessons it was a five hour round trip from my school so it was a huge commitment um, and I'm so grateful to my mum for making that possible um, then when I started university I did Skype lessons with my teacher Shendel twice a week and trained every day on my own for about two hours or really just as long as it would take till I was happy um, However, after multiple injuries, I completely changed my approach to training. Um, I focused much more on low impact and cross training and keeping the dance sessions shorter. Um, so for example, last summer leading up to Worlds, my sort of standard day was 6 a.m. for a swim for an hour, then uni all day, and then an hour of weights most evenings followed by 45 minutes of what I would call sort of stamina dancing so my aim is usually to do a full championship and one extra dance within 45 minutes so the extra dance would be any of them typically whatever one I felt wasn't very good like the sacrificial first one so then do it again at the end and um, so do that in 45 minutes and then technique for really just as long as it takes for me to be happy with it, which is usually a while because I'm quite self-critical. <laughs> so you've had the opportunity to travel to so many beautiful countries and I was just wondering, is there a favourite place for you and why? I am so lucky. I've been to 
so many amazing places. I've competed in all across the UK, in America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and South Africa. And I've made so many amazing friends all over the world. Um, there's nothing like Scott Dance Canada. It's definitely the biggest dance event. Um, I, and I love that each year it's in a different city. So I danced in Victoria, Toronto, Edmonton, Montreal, London and Vancouver. Um, and I've won six Canadian championships and every single one was so special. Um, in terms of my favorite, it would probably be champion of champions in Australia. Just, it was something that I'd always wanted to go and do and just be part of it. Um, when I got there, I was a nervous wreck the whole week as usual. Um, but every single person we met was so kind and they're all so welcoming. And um, I remember when I rocked up to the championship, just the stadium was huge. First of all, I was kind of, wow. And then um, a couple of dancers came up to me and they were wanting photos and like, they were like, oh my goodness, we can't wait to see you dance. And I just couldn't believe that people on the other side of the world knew who I was and like, they wanted to see me dance. It was crazy. So that was a really special day. Um, but yeah, and Canadians, I've always enjoyed them. I think my, my classic like Canadian, um, I got interviewed there one year after winning and they kept retaking the interview so we did it about five times and it was just me and by the fifth take I had this full-blown Canadian accent it was so embarrassing <laughs> so when we watched it on the tv my mom was like why are you talking with a Canadian accent do you have a standout favorite competitive memory um probably my most recent championship which was in South Africa it was just the best day. Um, I'm always so critical of my dancing. Usually when I finish a championship, I'll make a list of all the things that I thought weren't great or what I could do better, regardless of results. That's just how I am. Because um, there's always something that you can improve. Um, but in South Africa, I really felt like that's the best I've ever danced. And I wasn't in any pain. It was just great. Um, as usual, I was a nervous wreck, but um, I was surrounded by all of my dance family and um, FaceTiming with my friend, like dance friends from Australia and New Zealand and um, America. Um, and it was just, yeah, it was just a great day. Have you incurred any setbacks or injuries throughout your career? And how did you manage to get through them? Yeah, so, um, when I was younger, I got all the usual things, strains, stress fractures, which, you know, you tape up, you get some deep heat and you get on with it, you power through. It's what we're always taught to do. Um, my first proper injury was when I was 15. Um, I struggled with an injury from the European Championships onwards. Um, so the plan was just to power through until after cowl. Um, so I had acupuncture, physio, ultrasound, deep heat, just everything. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't work. Um, my foot gave out, landing a high cut in the swords in the world final, um, which is the worst possible time for anything like that to happen. Um, and actually, when I came off the stage and they were sort of taking my socks off and everything um I had a heat pack that I'd stuffed down my sock um to, to try and get it to you know my leg to warm up um and what we didn't realize was I danced both the fling and the sores with that in there um so that kind of showed that I really couldn't feel my leg at all there was so much going on um I was advised to stop that day but me being me um, I decided I wanted to finish. So I've been in pain at every championship that year. So I thought, you know what, one more day I can power through. Um, but yeah, it was absolutely horrible. I remember bowing at the start of each dance and not knowing if it would actually hop or if I would finish. And um, so I tore the tendons and the ligaments. They all have fancy names, but that was in my left foot. Um, and it took me about a year and a half to get over that injury and be able to dance with any sort of real power again and it was it was a real struggle 
Um, but my worst injury on my, my good leg <laughs> was when I was 18, I travelled to compete in New Zealand. Um, and I trained so, probably overtrained. Um, I danced for about two hours every day from the January to the July, um, as well as swimming and juggling uni and everything else. Um, I was dancing the hornpipe and again, landing high cut. Felt like someone had kicked me in the back of the leg and then I was just a heap on the floor, but no one had actually kicked me. That was my Achilles rupturing. Um, and I was absolutely devastated. I couldn't walk. Um, I knew that there was no way I would be able to compete in New Zealand, Australia or Worlds. Um, but I figured, do you know what? It's fine. I got over this on the other leg when I was 15. This will be the same. Um, so I was in a boot for weeks and then months of what I would call chair dancing. Mm -hmm. So not being able to hop, but just sort of trying to keep the technique and swimming and just um, no impact. Um, so then in the December, I was gradually able to start dancing again and things seemed to be on the up. And then it went again. Um, I was doing the swords and it was actually in here. <laughs> and um, there was a ping and it was the same thing, but it was actually worse the second time. Um, and I think I always remember I had an appointment with a surgeon and he we were in the, the room and he said, oh, is dancing going to be your career? Because if it is, you need to rethink things because you won't be doing this again. My aim is to get you to walk properly. Um, and he asked me to go from flat to rise up on the balls of both feet. And I just couldn't do it. Um, and we got home after the appointment and I thought, no, that was just a fluke. Like I can so do this. So I, I grabbed a chair and I, I don't know how long I spent trying to just raise up and I just couldn't do it like it it was like the foot wasn't even attached um and it was yeah I was absolutely gutted like I really didn't think after that I would dance again um but I have the best physio in the world Andy <laughs> and he literally put me back together um initially the aim sort of was just to be able to walk without any pain um and it took months and months of exercises and physio um, and there were so many setbacks and also like thinking about dancing and even hopping I think there was a big mental block as well like what if this goes again um, but I feel two years after that I competed in the adult world finals and I can honestly say that it's better than I've ever danced before um, I was an absolute wreck at Cowell last year <laughs> I think everyone could see I was so nervous <laughs> Um, I think the first time I breathed was the bow at the end of the reel. Um, and, but yeah, being able to come back from that injury is something that I'm really proud of. And I think I would say to anyone that's struggling with an injury, take the time to recover and get it right. But if I can do that, then I think anyone can do it. Yeah. That's such, it's so good to, for like other people to listen to that and see that it's, it might be bad right now, but if you keep working, you'll eventually get there. It's kind of coming away from competitions for, for a minute. Do you have a standout non-competitive memory that's been brought through in Highland dancing? So I had to think really hard about this one because there's been lots of good things um, that are non-competitive. But um, when I was 16, I qualified as a teacher. And for the past few years, I've held workshops for multiple dance schools across Scotland and um, been asked to do classes at conferences. The first one I actually taught, there was over 50 dancers. So talk about being thrown in at the deep end. Um, when I was um, 18, the SDTA asked me to be their first ever Highland ambassador, which was an absolute honour. And some of my favourite experiences have been teaching classes at their studios in Glasgow. Um, I remember the first class I taught there when I was 17. I was so nervous and worried that, um, you know, no words would come out and I would freeze and people would be like, oh, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, but the dancers arrived and there was so many of them. Most of them were older than me, but they were so enthusiastic. So I had the best time. 
Um, and I always enjoy it. I, I would say that every time I take a class there, I go in with a little bit of paper just in case I have a blank. And um, I can honestly say that every time by the end of the class, the paper is like soggy and kind of damp with sweat because they work so hard. <laughs> um, but um, in spite of all the sweating and hard work, it's always nice to get feedback from dancers or their parents. Um, I think that's one of the nicest things if to get a wee message that says, you know, oh, she's been so excited in the car all the way home or they're writing out all their corrections or oh, they've been practicing in the garage since they got back, all motivated. So yeah. that's always a really nice feeling. What would you say to a younger dancer that's maybe struggling with their dancing right now? So I would say concentrate on yourself. Don't worry about the other people in your group. If you set yourself goals um, and then think about how you're going to work to make those things happen. Um, I would also say don't worry about competitions and championships. See it as an opportunity to show everyone what you've been working on in the studio. Um, I think at the end of the day, you need to make yourself proud. It doesn't matter about what your teacher thinks, about what the judge thinks, about what your parents think even if you do have to hear it in the car all the way home. Um, for me, the aim is always to bow at the end of the reel and know that I gave it 100%. And I think if that's what you aim for, then, you know, it's, it's down to you and it's not on other people. Yeah. What are you doing during lockdown to keep yourself motivated and fit? So I'm still doing my weights every day and plyometrics every day as well um, I've also started mixed martial arts just to mix it up a little bit um, <laughs> and then um, dancing as well on top of that but um, I've loved seeing everyone do their dance challenges and all the things going around it's great to see that everyone's keeping it up and sharing it yeah yeah I think it's mainly um, other people doing challenges that is keeping a lot of people motivated and still dancing every single day. Finally, I just want to, I'm just going to start asking everyone this at the end of my videos, but um, is there anyone that you would like to see interviewed? So I'm a huge Carla Gardner fan. Um, so yeah, I would love to hear more about her stories because I know um, she's someone who has always inspired me and especially when I was injured she was someone that I looked up to because I knew that she'd been through something similar so thank you so much and I just want to thank you so much for coming on and doing this I know it's totally out of your comfort zone to talk to yourself, <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on <laughs> thank you for having me no problem